earthquakes have always happened, and while some of us, lucky enough to live away from the edges of tectonic plates, the horror stories of earthquakes stay only on the news, for others the damages caused are very real, tangible and severe. An earthquake happens when the edges of tectonic plates get stuck as a result of friction. There is then a slip on a fault, the fracture between the rocks that let them move relative to one another. These huge events can be catastrophic, and so, of course, plenty of research has gone into understanding earthquakes, how they happen, what we can do to prepare, and the impact of them. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we will be taking a look at three discoveries made about earthquakes. San Andreas Fault is ready for a major earthquake. There are several countries in the world that we know are particularly prone to severe earthquakes, including Japan, China, and Iran. A number of American states are also up there for experiencing bad earthquakes, and nearing the top of that list is California. In California, the 750-mile-long San Andreas Fault, the fault that makes up the tectonic boundary between the Pacific Plate and the North American Plate. Models have been produced to help to figure out the long-term slip rate of the San Andreas Fault, meaning the speed at which the two sides of the fault slip relative to one another. Following these observations, it has been estimated that the San Andreas Fault will have a major earthquake comparable to that it experienced in 1906, every 200 years. It takes time for an earthquake to build up a slip that will result in a 20-foot offset, meaning that there is a small chance that this will happen within 30 years. To be precise, the Working Group on California Earthquake Probabilities said approximately a 2% chance. This does not mean the San Francisco Bay Area is immune from earthquakes. There is still a chance that significant earthquakes will happen, with predictions suggesting before 2032 a major earthquake will occur, though it simply will not be as large as the one in 1906 for another 100 years or so. California scientists discover new type of earthquake. Until 2016, when scientists uncovered a new, more destructive type of earthquake, we thought we understood the mechanics behind the natural disaster. We believed that earthquakes occurred in the top half of the planet's crust, as a result of friction built up over time as the tectonic plates rub against one another. This is true for most earthquake events, and isn't inaccurate though it appears that worse fates could be on the horizon. A research team based in Southern California found evidence that an earthquake can occur from a much deeper level than we had thought, more than 15 miles deep, placing the seismic event in the upper mantle of the Earth, not in the crust at all. A reminder for those of us who might need brushing up on our high school geography, the Earth's structure is made up of the crust, the mantle, the outer core and the inner core. The crust is the solid, outer layer of the Earth, and the mantle is mostly solid, almost entirely solid rock, unlike the liquid outer core, which is then followed by the solid innermost layer of the Earth, the inner core. Scientists had made the assumption that earthquakes can begin just 12 to 15 miles below the Earth's surface, as any deeper and we begin to make our way to the mantle. Due to the high temperatures and solid state of the mantle, Researchers operated under the assumption that the seismic activity could not build up and develop in these conditions. These expectations all shifted, however, when a Caltech team used the most powerful seismic sensors available. The Caltech team from Pasadena, California, picked up small earthquakes using the previously mentioned seismic sensors as they moved across the Newport Inglewood fault line further than the anticipated 15 miles, breaking the surface into the upper mantle. This seemingly small difference marks a significant discovery. This is a new, never-before-seen type of earthquake. So what does this mean? Earthquakes are devastating, homes are destroyed, lives taken, jobs lost. Though there seems to be only bad news to come. Scientists have predicted that this new type of earthquake means that future earthquakes can become even larger, leaving even more damage in their wake. One of the researchers, Jean-Paul Ampuero, explained if earthquakes want to get big, one way of achieving that is by penetrating deep. He continues to elaborate that the fact that the earthquakes can penetrate the earth deeper than we thought possible means that they could catch us off guard, getting larger than we would expect and bigger than we are prepared for. 
Since both the Newport Inglewood fault line and the San Andreas fault line are the same category of fault, it is reasonable to assume that the longest fault line in California, San Andreas, stretching for 750 miles, is also capable of producing these deeper earthquakes. This research follows the 2012 earthquake that struck the Indian Ocean, near Sumatra, a huge earthquake clocking in at a staggering magnitude 8.6. Ampuero mentioned that this was the biggest earthquake of this type to have ever happened. This fault is known as the Strike Slip, which, again, much like Newport Inglewood, is the same type as San Andreas. The team began to delve deeper into just how the 2012 Sumatra earthquake was able to happen, figuring out that these deeper quakes break into the mantle. So far, there are not many definitive answers. While scientists are guessing that these deep earthquakes will be much more dangerous and more extreme, there are others who say that this is all simply blown out of proportion, and the deep earthquakes may just be small and localized, not expanding or connecting with one another and therefore leaving the surface somewhat undisturbed. If this is correct, it means we would see a series of tiny earthquakes, but never one big one. Ampuero said, I wouldn't say that this is cause for alarm at this point. These are very interesting questions that we need to pursue. We don't yet know whereabouts in the planet these earthquakes can occur, whether they will play out in one large disastrous blow or lots of smaller, more manageable waves. For now, researchers continue to dig deeper, finding as much information as they can. Until then, we will have to wait and see just how these earthquakes begin to play out. Earthquakes can actually help trees grow. Plenty will rush to tell you that the trunk of a tree can tell you its life. Count the rings of the tree to see how old it is and look at how the rings are patterned to see what the weather and climate was like in each year of its life. Though a tree can tell us an awful lot more too. 2021 studies have delved deeper into the impact of earthquakes on tree growth. Could these horrific natural disasters have a silver lining after all? It is not a new suggestion to propose that earthquakes impact the geographical space, leaving its aftermath on trees and surrounding nature, not just ruining homes and villages. The idea that earthquakes can somehow help the trees grow is a somewhat novel suggestion. The basic premise is that the earthquakes shake up the ground, increasing water levels. This in turn then increases the water levels above the ground that the trees can then absorb. This feeds into plants and trees in environments with very little access to water, removing the limiting factors that usually inhibit growth. The research team, led by the first author and hydrologist, Christian Moore from the University of Potsdam in Germany, said, If tree growth is limited mainly by water, trees should in theory record hydrological responses to earthquakes by changing their growth rates. This would mean that by reading over the story of the tree's trunk, and looking out for the volume of water intaken, any steep rises we could assume are due to earthquakes. This premise was investigated using pine trees in Chile, looking at the aftermath of the 8.8 .8 magnitude earthquake that hit in 2010. The hypothesis was that the changes earthquakes would make to the groundwater supply would encourage tree growth when trees are close to valley streams and hinder or prevent this growth when they are on hillsides. The tree cores were taken in 2014, and an analysis of them has since been completed, revealing that some valley trees did see a temporary but significant increase in growth following the earthquake, though those on the slope of the hill struggled following the earthquake for the same duration of time. During their analysis, the team found some of their evidence of increased hydration through the tree rings. They credited an increased lumen area to a greater volume of water for the purposes of the study. Other measurement devices were the ratio of carbon isotopes in the cells of the tree, as this provided an insight into the health, growth and water availability and at a cellular level, a far more intricate measurement than seen before. Despite the excitement following the initial claim that earthquakes help trees to grow, the team did find that the effects only lasted for a few weeks. Even so, the case study looking at the lumen area and isotope ratios could prove to be useful for further research and future studies too. Earthquakes can be frightening, though the more we research and understand, the better prepared we can be to help us all to stay as safe as possible. But what do you make of these scientific discoveries? 
Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comments section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.